Chapter 3 About Research Design We start with the research design definition. A research design can be def defined as a framework for conducting the marketing research project as it details the procedures for obtaining information needed to solve marketing research problems. A classification of marketing research design, it is all about the outline of this chapter. We have got here research design that can be divided into two. Number one, exploratory research design. <clears throat> the other one, conclusive research design. Conclusive research design can be divided in turn into descriptive research and causal research. Regarding descriptive research, it can be also divided into cross-sectional design, longitudinal design. The cross-sectional de design can be divided into two. Single cross-sectional design, multiple cross-sectional design. Research design classification. We have got two types of research design. Number one, exploratory research and conclusive research. Exploratory research is all about the provision of insight into, a, into and the comprehension of the problem situation as we explained before. The other type of research design is conclusive research design. The main objective is to assist the decision maker in determining, evaluating, and selecting the best course of action required. Some true and false statements. A research design is a framework or blueprint for conducting the marketing research project. Is it true or false? The answer is true. There are three main types of research design employed in marketing research, exploratory, descriptive, and conclusive. Is it true or false? The answer is false. Why it is false? Because we have got two types of research designs. Number one, exploratory. Number two, conclusive. And the descriptive is part of the conclusive research design. Exploratory research is used in cases when you must define the problem more precisely identify relevant courses of action, or gain additional insight before an approach can be developed? The answer is true. In here, we'll make a comparison or differentiation between exploratory and the conclusive research. Number one, objectives. The main objective of exploratory, as we mentioned before, is to provide insights and in the understanding of the problem. But conclusive main objective is to test specific hypotheses 
and examine relationships. The other factor of comparison is characteristics. We have got here four characteristics of exploratory. Number one, information needed is defined only loosely. B, research process is flexible and unstructured. C, sample selected is small and non-representative of the entire population. D, analysis of primary data is qualitative. The opposite will be regarding conclusive. A. Information needed is clearly defined. B. Research process is formal and structured. C. Sample is large and representative of the whole population. D. Data analysis is quantitative exactly the opposite. Findings research. Tentative, here it is conclusive. The outcome generally followed by further exploratory or exclu exclusive research. But regarding conclusive, finding used as input into decision. A comparison of basic research designs. The basic research designs are exploratory, descriptive, and causal. We have got three factors against which we'll make such comparison. Number one, objective. The main objective of exploratory research design is discovery of ideas and insight of the problem, as we mentioned before. Descriptive describe market characteristics, mainly the characteristics of customers. But when it comes to causal research design, it determines the cause and effect relationship. Number two, characteristics. Regarding exploratory, it is flexible and versatile. Descriptive, market, marked by the prior formulation of a specific hypothesis. Causal, manipulation of independent variables effect on dependent variables. Here we'll give some examples. If we say when we launch more advertising campaign, it will lead to increased sales. Which one is that independent and the other one the dependent variable. In this situation, increasing the advertising campaign is independent, but the dependent will be increasing in sales. Another example. When provide more case of more service to customers, It leads to increasing customer satisfaction. In this situation, the independent variable is improving customer service, and the dependent, the dependent one is increasing customer satisfaction. Methods, all these methods will be explained later on. Number one, expert surveys, pilot surveys, case studies, secondary data analyzed qualitatively. 
When it comes to descriptive research design, I've got secondary data analyzed quantitatively, surveys, panels, observational, and other data. When it comes to experiments, we'll give here an example of how experiments are done in the area of marketing research. In order to apply the causal research designs using experiments, assume we have got two similar areas say Heliopolis and El Mohandesin. We'll select a sample from Heliopolis, we call it control sample. And another sample from El Mohandesin, we call it experimental sample. We'll go through many steps. Number one, We'll have to measure sales in both ideas, in both areas. It was 100 in the control sample in Heliopolis and 100 in the experimental sample in El Mohandesin. We'll conduct an advertising campaign in the experimental area, which is in Mohandesin, for one month. And we'll do nothing regarding Heliopolis. When the month lapses, we'll have to measure sales once again. In here, we'll have two options. If sales in both areas becomes 105, in El Mohandesin 105, and in Heliopolis also 105, it means no effect of advertising campaign, which is the independent variable, on sales, which is the dependent variables. That is the first option. The second assumption is in the control area, which is Heliopolis, sales increased to 105. But in El Mohandesin, the experimental sample showed an increase in sales to 120. Therefore, the net, the net increase in sales because of launching an advertising campaign is 15. The insight gained from exploratory research might be verified or quantified by conclusive research. Is it true or false? Of course it is true. Which of the following tasks is not a component of causal research? A. Design the exploratory, descriptive, and or causal phases of the research. Develop hypotheses. Construct and pretest questionnaire or an appropriate form for data collection. Specify the sampling process and the sample size. The right answer is B.
exploratory research is used in all of the following cases except when you must define the problem more precisely when you must identify relevant course of action when you must gain additional insight before an approach can be developed selecting a course of action to take in a given situation it is d is research designed to assist the decision maker in determining if uh, determining evaluating and selecting the best course of action to take in a given situation <coughs> conclusive complex research exploratory research problem identification research The right answer is A. Definition of descriptive research. As we explained during the comparison between exploratory research, descriptive research, and the causal research, a descriptive research is a type of research that has as its major objectives, the description of something, usually market characteristics or function. Conclusive research is typically more formal and structured than exploratory research. Is it true? or false the answer is true which of the following statements about secondary data is true as a secondary data are originated by the researcher for the specific purpose of addressing the research problem at hand Primary data should not be collected until the available secondary data have been fully analyzed. C. Secondary data are on economical and the quick source of background information. Pause B and C. Which of all of these option is the right answer the answer is d cross-sectional designs what is the definition of cross-sectional design and the single cross-sectional design Cross-sectional design, it means we use one representative sample to gather information only once. It means we we'll select a representative sample of the population and get information from them only once no more than one time a single cross-sectional design it means gathering information from any given sample also only once we'll get the required information from any sample only 
for one time. Another one, when we talk about cross-sectional design, we spoke about single sectional design. Here we'll talk about multiple cross-sectional designs. Here we select two, two or more samples and get information from both of them. Only once, one time. If a therefore is a difference between multi cross sectional design and the single sectional design is there they select the only sample here they have to be two or more samples. Here we get information from each of them only once there we have got only one sample we we'll get information from that sample only once a third type of cross-sectional designs is cohort what do you mean by cohort it is a group of respondents who experience same event within the same time intervals the first cohort serves as the basic unit of analysis at two or more cohort. An example. We have selected the first cohort, which is a sample of people aged between 20 and 30. We measured their consumption of soft drinks. It was 100. After 10 years, we selected another cohort aged between 30 and 40. We measured their consumption of soft drinks. It was 150. This means that soft drinks consumption increased by 50% during 10 years we can select another cohort if people in this situation ranges their age ranges between 40 and 50. they don't have to be the same respondents as number one and the number Two. Regarding the third cohort, will measure sales. Assume it was 300. We mentioned before, the basic unit for analysis is cohort number one. Therefore, we'll compare soft drinks consumption in the third cohort with the first one the basic unit of analysis. It means consumption of soft drinks has increased by 100%. Longitudinal designs. Longitudinal design, it is a fixed sample or samples. It is the opposite of cohort. There, they don't have to be the same sample. But with longitudinal design, it is a fixed sample of that repeatedly measured on the same variable over time. It means same sample. But after five years or ten years or whatever, will measure their consumption the same sample regarding a specific product. If a longitudinal design fixed sample or samples that repeatedly measured on the same variable over time. 
cross sectional and longitudinal design are types of descriptive causal exploratory none of the above <coughs> 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 The right answer is A, descriptive research, is a type of conclusive research that has at its major objectives the description of something usually market characteristics or functions. Is it exploratory, conclusive? descriptive, causal, the answer is also descriptive research, which is C. That is the difference between cross-sectional and longitudinal research design. Cross-sectional design, we select sample or samples at one time. <coughs> Longitudinal design, we've got here the same sample surveyed at time one and the time and the, the first one, as you have to be the same sample as the opposite of the other one, it could be different sample of people. A major difference between exploratory and descriptive research is exploratory research is characterized by their prior formulation of specific hypotheses. Is it true or false? It is false. Consult the table of comparison. Cross-sectional designs involve the collection of information from any given sample of population elements only once. True or false? Easy. It is true. Advantage and disadvantages of long longitudinal and cross-sectional design. The evaluation criteria and here cross-sectional design and longitudinal design. Detecting a change. change. Detecting a change. Longitud longitudinal design will be at advantage. Large amount of data collection, the same. Accuracy, also the same, long, longitudinal. Representative sampling in here, cross-sectional design will be at advantage. Response pies, cross-sectional design will be at advantage in this criterion. Same sample over time, of course, longitudinal is at advantage because it is, they have to, to employ the same sample over time. <coughs> Uses of cause research. Cause research is a type of conclusive research. 
aims at determining the cause which is the independent factor and the effect which is the dependent variable by using experiment. Here we'll give two examples. Number one, increased advertising campaign leads to increased market share. In this example, you'll find increased advertising campaign is the cause or the independent variable. Increased market share is the effect or the, the dependent factor. Another example, improved service provided to customers leads to increased customer satisfaction. The same. Improved service provided to customer, it is the cause or the independent variable. Leads to increased customer satisfaction, it is effect with or the dependent variable. But what about the experiments? How can we conduct? an experiment related to the first example. Increased advertising campaign leads to increased market share. In here, we'll have to select two or more very similar areas. Assume we have selected Heliopolis and El Mohandesin. More or less, they are very similar to one another. We'll have to select a sample from Heliopolis and another one from El Mohandesin. The sample selected from Heliopolis, we call it control sample the other one is the experimental sample which is el mohandisin how can we prove that increased advertising campaigns leads to increased sales number one will have to measure sales in both areas assume in the control area which is helopolis sales measured at 105 the same with the experimental area which is in mohandesin it was also 105 Number two, we'll launch the advertising campaign in El Mohandesin, which is the experimental area only. But Heliopolis will never do anything. After one month of advertising in the experimental area, which is in Mohandesin. We'll have to remeasure sales once again. Assume we'll give here two assumptions. Assumption number one, that sales increased in Heliopolis, the control area, it has become 105. And in the experimental, area it was also 105 this means there is no any impact between the independent factor and the dependent factor because they got the same sales the other assumption is that in, Heli in Heliopolis when we measured sales, it was 105. 
but in el muhandisin's experimental area it was 120 therefore the impact of advertising a campaign on sales is only 50. One reason to conduct causal research is to determine the degree to which marketing variables are associated. For example, to what extent is shopping at department stores related to eating out? The answer is false. Because cause and research is all about cause and effect. As we mentioned before, cause it means independent. And effect is dependent. In single cross-sectional designs, there are two or more samples of respondents and information from each sample is obtained only once. The answer is false. Why? Because in single cross-sectional designs, we select only one sample and information from that sample is obtained only once. A, long, a longitudinal design We are approaching the end of chapter 3. Cohort analysis is a type of multiple cross-sectional design that consists of a series of surveys conducted at appropriate time intervals. Where is a cohort serves as a basic unit of analysis? True or false? It is true. In court analysis, it is likely that many of the individuals studied at time one will also be in the same in the sample at time two. True or false. Definitely false. Why? Because as we mentioned before, in cohort analysis, it doesn't have to be respondents in cohort one the same in cohort two. They meet totally different respondents. 